Hola, and welcome to episode 119 of Word to Your Mama. Word to Your Mama is a podcast about the life of Latina Mama, that's me, and the lives of my amazing multicultural tribe, a celebration of shared experiences navigating this dynamic world. There will be special guests, mad laughs, and absolutely no BS. Segments by the supernatural bear, he's 10 going on 40. Other than that, this podcast will be explicit. Please believe it. Now, why do I have a wide range of peeps on here? It's because I come from the music, art, and Web3 industries. And Word Dear Mama comes out every Monday. So today we have Adrian, a.k.a. Book Papi. He's a Latine bookstore owner, content creator, and as I phrase it up in this episode, sommelier of books. So he's another guest that reps Queens hard. Um, Adrian, a.k.a. Book Papi, discusses how his mom instilled his love of reading while his daughter inspired him to open his bookstore. He also t- discusses why he changed the name of his bookstore to the World's Borough Bookshop. He talks about how things change since blowing up on the Tip Top, a.k.a. TikTok, and so much more. And I just want to say, if Adrian is listening to his own episode, muchísima gracia, because we recorded this episode, uh, I believe it was the end of January, so a couple weeks ago, perhaps, when this comes out. And uh, he made my day, because towards the end of our convo, he says that my podcast, Where Your Mom, inspires him to do something, and I'll, I'll allow you to, to peruse and get to that section so you could hear him tell the story. But uh, it made my day. And then after we wrapped up, we stayed on and we, you know, had combos. That's what I usually do with most of my guests. And uh, and then when I got off with him, like completely got off, we weren't recording and we weren't talking. I kind of like started tearing up because it's it's one thing when someone sees you from afar and they don't really know you like that and they don't know what you've put into to creating something from nothing and they get it and so much so that uh you know they say these really kind things and it inspires them to do something then it makes all the hard work you know worth it so muchísima gracia for that and uh okay as always listen to the convo this amazing convo we're about to have then we go into the supernatural bear corner and then after that a little outro uh so yes let's get into it are you at this at the bookshop right now, or are you at home? I'm at home. I'm at home right now. Nice. I like the art and yeah. Queens, New York, <laughs> Marvel. Always represent. You're I gotta represent. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Um, Adrian, am I saying it? I'm saying it correctly, right? Yeah, Adrian, Adrian, whichever one. Adrian, let's do it the right way let's, let's do, do it, it the right way <laughs> i like i like i like hearing people say adrian <laughs> adrian. Two more time in school adrian <laughs> right i'm sure like you're just like i'm not even gonna correct anybody i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> exactly i was like whatever call me whatever you want i'm, I'm from rocky adrian that's what i got a lot adrian. <laughs> awesome well adrian thank you for being here uh how are you doing Como estas? Thank you for having me. Todos bien. Todos great. Um, no snow, which, listen, nice. I love New York, but there's no snow and I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Counting the days till summer. <laughs> when does it like, great. when does spring at least start, like for reals, for reals, where it feels like spring to, to you guys? I would say around May. May, dang. Yeah, it's Where? yeah. So we had a couple, we had a couple months, ago. <laughs> but it's warm. It's a warm winter, so I'm not complaining. Nice, nice. I remember one time, um, my husband at the time he was my boyfriend. He was in New York, and he sent me a picture. This was must have been like early 2000s, maybe or maybe late 90s, and the snow was like at the top of the parking meter. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. That's how I grew up. And I was like, I can't even imagine. We, California, us over here on the West Coast, it's 60 degrees. Forget about it. North Face, <laughs> you know, like Bundled. the whole thing. Gloves, want is a whole shebang. Like, we get cold. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I could never. Um, so, Adrian, so when 
you know, when someone you meet has no idea, uh, is not on Instagram and is not on the dip top, a.k.a. TikTok, and doesn't know <laughs> of your fame, um, and they say, what do you do? What, what, what is your, what's your answer to that? That is such a good question because I, I recently, I would say within the last month, finally just said, when people ask me, um, I used to just say, I make some TikToks here and there and talk about books. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> that's how I used to say it. But now I just say, you know what? Uh, I own the bookshop and I do content creation. That's right. and, then they, and, then, and then the next question is, what content do you create? And then I say, books. And they go, what do you mean you do books? Everyone's always surprised. They're like, wait, you do TikToks on books? And I go, yeah, just recommending books. So all I do, <laughs> I'll throw in a dance every once in a while, but there's a book involved in the dance. So that's it. <laughs> right, right. So, so like the way I came across you was via Tip Top. And uh, I, I was on Just a Lurker and I was like, I, I want to follow you know, once my algorithm got right and I wasn't just getting like the dances and stuff. And I was like, oh, there's some amazing content creators here of color. Right. Yeah. There's only a few quality Caucasians that that I follow. They have to really be giving me something I can't yeah. get or something or or like I really feel that they're expert in the field and they're allies, you know, and accomplices or whatever. But 100%. when I found you, I was like, you know, you didn't have the crazy big file. So I've seen your trajectory and it's been amazing. And also it's like, oh yeah, we're, uh, you know, um, uh, La Latine, Latinx, you know, book owner in Queens, New York. And you're giving us the stuff. I think the first time that you were like, someone asked you about maybe a, a kid's book or something. And I was like, oh yes. Yeah. And then I was like, follow and it, it's been amazing, you know, to see your trajectory and see how awesome you've been. And now you're giving us Thank like you. the ASMR with the with the, <laughs> with the new been mic. Funny. That's been. <laughs> I got the mic and I started talking to it regular because I didn't feel like screaming because I didn't want the volumes to be too high. It's my first time using a mic, and then everyone was like, "Whoa, ASMR!" Whoa, whoa. and I was like, "Oh no, is that? I didn't mean to do that. I just didn't feel like yelling with my loud voice inside a microphone." <laughs> But I was like, whatever. People like it. I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> I'm not gonna change the volume. <laughs> it was fancy. You know, I remember when I first when you fir when I first saw the first video with you with it, I was like, oh, excuse. You give <laughs> giving the people what they want. <laughs> that's so, that's why I gotta keep going with it now. Like I right? can't change the volume. I'm gonna the stay people right need here. to be super upset if you if you stop that. So what um so where were you were you born and raised in Queens? Yeah. Born and raised in Queens my whole life. Um, there were three years, like in middle school when I lived in Florida, but forget those. Uh, we, we came, we came right back. <laughs> we came right back. Me and my mom were like, nah, we're good. <laughs> back to New York. Um, uh, but yeah, no, lived here, born and raised. I've been, I've lived in different neighborhoods in Queens, so uh -huh. I haven't stayed in the same spot, but I recently came back to like where I grew up, like the first like big part of my life in Jackson Heights, Queens. And now I'm back here, but yeah, it's beautiful. I love it here. It's nice. So, um, Tell the people what's the name of your, what was the name of your bookstore and what the name of the bookstore is now. Yeah. So the name of the bookstore was called the Golden Lab Bookshop. And I opened it in 2019. And the reason it was because I had recently got my dog, always wanted a dog. He's my best friend. I was a single kid growing up, single child. So who's, that's my boy, my brother. Um, you can see the clock up there, like, and that's it. And then I kept that name for a while. And I recently changed it in the last couple of months just because. I wanted to feel more connected to the community. Mm. And then going forward, I really like drilled down, like, no, I'm going to do this for my community. I want to bring it back to Queens because the beauty of TikTok is that it brought me out of Queens. Like it brought me to everywhere. Mm. Like it was insane what it did for not only me, but my bookshop and everything, but it took me out of New York. So I had this entire base of like outside of New York and I wanted to make sure Everyone knows where we're coming from. Where are your books coming from? Where are your TikTok coming from? You're coming from here. You're coming from Queens. The most diverse borough in the world, the most diverse area, the most languages spoken in like a block. I want people to know that. So that's why I changed it. That's amazing. I like I like the the name. And then I, I reached out to you when I saw it was the world's borough bookshop, bookshop because 
of our guests that we had on, the hip hop advocates, also hailing from Queens, you know, where the, where one of them said, uh, where man began. And I was where like, man began. So I love that line so much. <laughs> I started sending it to everybody. I know that, yo, listen, listen, look at that, look at that. Because everyone who knows me knows I love Queens. Like one of my friends is moving right now to San Diego. I'm like, are you sure? I'm like, all right, I'll see you soon, I guess. <laughs> I love San Diego, too. I've been there. It's great. It's a beautiful place. But I'm like, you sure? I'll see you when you come back. Yeah, let me know how that friend... Because I'm born and raised. I'm from San Diego, but I I left. I found out as soon as possible because I couldn't... Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think it's different when you go as as an adult. But we'll see. Keep us posted. See how your friend is doing. (laughs) When they come back, I'll be be sure to tell everybody. (laughs) So um, are you first gen? So my dad was born, he's from Ecuador, he was born in Ecuador, and I was born here, and my mom was born here also. So, a little bit, technically, a little, little bit, a little bit of both. <laughs> my, mom's, my mom was born and raised in Queens, she's from Queens, Queens. Wow. But my dad, my dad came over here when he was like a teenager, or a little, like almost in an early 20s when he was, when he came from Ecuador. Wow, that's amazing. And, and one of our other guests, uh, Kano, he's a, an amazing animator, artist, um, muralist, and he's from Queens, and he's Ecuadorian también. So that's oh, like, what? yeah, he's family. I talk to talk to that crazy fool all, almost every day. <laughs> his, his episode is called The Mild Mannered Hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And he's been that. out here over 10 years, but you would never know it because it's Queens, New York, rep all the time. Yeah, that's a, the that's a beauty of it. First, as La- Latino, Latina people, we're super prideful of our country, like where our parents are from, where our roots are from. But then, like, when you're from New York, then you get that extra, extra pride because then you're like, I rep my borough to the end. <laughs> Especially Queens people. They're the, like, they rep it harder than ever. Hard. I, I love it. They rep I it love hard. it. You guys are the best. Um, and I'm going to be out there in April. We could discuss discuss later um, to be on one of the um, podcasts. Another guy that's coming out, his episode's coming out later. He's also from Queens. Um, Dominicanos, yeah. all Dominicanos. And so, um, beautiful. yeah, I'm excited to to revisit uh, Queens and, and check it out. How it's, how it's been a long time. So I wanted to find out, have you always been into, but like, what was your root that got you into books? I hated math. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at math. It's ridiculous. No, <laughs> I do. It's true. I do hate math. But um, so... My my dad passed away when I was super young, when I was a baby, right? So it was just me and my mom. Yeah, and then my mom, she she was a single mom. And no matter what, she always wanted me to read books, mm. right? So she always drilled in me, let's read books. But it wasn't always like, we weren't like a sergeant. Like I had my Nintendo 64 playing. I had a bunch of stuff going on. Like she wasn't like, a, you got to read this. No, no. So she used to bring me to Forest Hills from here, from Jackson Heights. I used to take a train almost every weekend. I would say every other weekend, but I'm pretty sure it's almost every weekend. And we would watch a movie at the movie theater there. And then we go to the big Barnes and Noble there. Because the library here at the time was super messy. It was like not well kept. It was like really difficult to find good kids books in there. It was very old. Now it's much better. And I'm so happy because the kids now get to go in there, get books for free, put them back in. It's super nice now. But back then it wasn't. And yeah, that's how it started. Like I would watch a movie, get some books and we go home. And that's she would always buy me new books. At the time, were you were you like ah oh, books? No. But from jump, you were like always into books. From like she jump, didn't have to force yeah. It. No, I loved it. Even when she was like when she was tired from working, she would fall asleep, and I would read the book like at night, like just straight just to finish the story. Oh, just because I've always loved to read. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was always just like imagination, and I and I and I always say, especially to parents, to kids, when they ask me for a rec, I go, "What's your favorite TV show?" Because for me, it's like it's super intertwined. Like if you, it's not a bad thing if your kid likes TV. It's not a bad thing if your kid plays video games no. because that opens their imagination. Yeah. And then when they read a book, oh, they're like, oh, it's another world. Let me just imagine it. Yeah. The more the more sources you give the kid, the easier it is for them to imagine like what's happening in a book. Someone's flying on a dragon. Someone's running around. Things like that. And then when you get like what I do, which is you, you put more cultural aspects into mm-hmm. it. Then you're like, whoa, this guy's eating the same dish I eat every night. This this guy looks like my mom. This guy looks like my dad. All these people look like my people. Then you get a whole, the imagination explodes. That, that's amazing. And, and speaking of that, I wanted to, 
you know, you're a voracious reader. That's amazing. Um, and, and I think that's what's important because you know how to get them hooked, right? Because I remember being a kid and I was like, I guess I'm not a reader, but it's because I never found, it took a while for me to find my jam, like my lane, like what types of stories I like, you know, there's so many different, I think people don't understand that, you know, and especially you're, you've given a book to read for homework, you're like, Ugh, you know, and now looking back, I was like, oh, I wish I would have been a voracious reader when I was a kid. But I have a question you recently posted and, and this is for um, uh, an answer for the supernatural bear, you know, my 10 year old who, who's going on 40, who has a segment on this show. Um, but we, you mentioned a book on one of your tip tops, thick talks, and I'll have a, a link to it. And you're, someone said, what if my kid likes, you know, reads per, Percy Jackson, that story. So my, mm-hmm. so the supernatural book, he hasn't read that, but he was, we we're reading together. We're reading. This, so he got from his, um, one of his primas, the Cain Chronicles. Um, yeah. So, and then you mentioned this one book and I, I bookmarked it. Um, Charlie Hernandez and the League of Shadows by Ryan mm-hmm. Calejo. So. How did you find that book? So, how did I find that book? I the, the way I find these books and these authors is so I forgot the exact way I found it, but this is how I most likely found it. I usually find authors from the country. Mm. So I usually put like Ecuadorian authors, and I try to look like who is the authors, who's writing, who's who's someone that we need to watch out for. And I think that's how I found him. And then I saw he was a fantasy writer, I go, oh, perfect. And then I saw he was a kid writer, I go, even better. Yeah. And then that's how I attack it. I usually attack it by countries. So I usually go like, hmm, a Guatemalan author. Let me see, are there any Guatemalan authors? I haven't heard of any Guatemalan authors. And then I'll look and I'll read through all those books that seem interesting and I think people would like. And then I'll just keep them like right there. For then someone to ask me, oh, do you know any Guatemalan Rex? And I go, yes, I do. And then I'm ready to go. <laughs> I love yeah, that. That's, that's always my first way to get into it. And the other thing to add on to the last question is Same. that during my teenage years, right, like during a little bit like during high school, I didn't read as much as I used to. Mm. Just because like everything's changing. Like yeah. you're growing up, you got girls, you got parties, you got all these sort of things. And that's okay because you always jump back into it very easily enough. And like the other thing my mom told me very young was like, like whenever you get bored of reading and you just want to watch TV, remember that the only reason why these, what you're watching is people reading. The only way they're able to say those lines, they read scripts. That's they real. read scripts, they read stories, they read this. So no matter what, it always ends up back to reading. I love that. So then I was like, oh, that's she's right. But yeah, uh, but yeah, back to. I just wanted to add on to that because it's okay if like your teenager starts not that. reading. Like, listen, I stopped reading for a bit too, and then I got back into it. It just it just happens. But That's yeah, Charlie great. Hernandez, that book is one of my favorite books to recommend. I've given it to so many teachers, so many schools for their kids because when you I had when I was growing up, I think Percy Jackson was when I was a little older, but I still read it and it was great. It was it was awesome. But all we had were Greek mythologies. Yeah, and I'm like, that's cool. But this one is like such a good adventure story. It's a trilogy. And now we have so many more. And shout outs to Rick Riordan, the guy who wrote Percy Jackson. Because they were going to give him a bag to write more. And he was like, give me the bag, but I'm not going to write anymore. I'm going to I'm going to write. I'm going to let the people from those cultures write those write those books. And yeah. then he made Rick Riordan present. And I that was a great, great idea. I loved it. Yeah, I love that. And what is your mom's name? If you don't mind sharing your mom's name. Yeah, Liz. Liz, shout out to Liz. She sounds amazing. You know, like I love that because she was like, listen, uh, this was written before it was made into production. And I, I yeah. love that in, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, word. Like this is a pop out of nowhere. Um, OK, so Adrian, let, okay, before we get into the, the questions and comments from the audience. Yeah. How did you go from voracious reader to, oh, you know what? I'm going to open a bookstore. Oh, uh, <laughs> so I'll tell you the exact moment it happened. I was sitting in a college classroom. I was in college. I was an English major, obviously. Of course. <laughs> and of course. And then, <laughs> and then I read a book and it was the first time I ever saw myself in a book. So I, it's embarrassing for me because there's a lot of children who early on can see something or read something and be like, these people don't look like me. This story doesn't reflect who I am. That wasn't me. I was, like you said, a voracious reader. So I read whatever and didn't think about it. I was like, whatever, 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 whatever. 
And then I sat in that college classroom and I read the story and I go, oh, this is the first kid who's like a little chubby. I was husky. What do you want me to do? <laughs> who, who read comic books, who was from New York. They didn't live in New York, Dominican. And I was like, wow, this kid reminds me of me. He looked oh. like me. He sounds like me. He reads comic books. He reads books just like me. And then I was like, wait a minute. I, did I just go through my whole, like my first 20 years of life, not reading books about me or people from like our cultures. And in that moment is when I said, that's it. And I just started devouring like BIPOC books and not only Latina, but just every culture. I was just, mm. I wanted everything. And then, yeah. And then around, and then I realized I started visiting all these bookstores all over New York and I loved them and I loved the vibe. And then I said, okay, but there's no bookstore specifically for us. And I go, I want to do that because I'm not going to do this nine to five thing forever, but this is what I want to do. And I, people need it. People want it. And I'm sure it'll, it'll hopefully succeed. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the moment when, and then when I was, so on TikTok, I don't talk about it a lot, but I am, I do have a child. Oh, <laughs> she's nice. six. Yeah. She's, six? She's, 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 she's five she's now. Five. She's five. She's oh, turning she's six. Five. Oh, cute. Yeah. She's five. And then when she was born, that's when I decided, I go, this is what I'm going to do for her. I want her to go to school, leave school with her friends and have a bookstore to go to because I didn't have a bookstore to go to. And when those kids go there, whether they're Colombian, Dominican, Puerto Rican, I want them to see themselves in books. So in 2017 is when I made the decision. That's when she was born. And then, yeah, that's, that's, that's technically the real, real story of, oh. when I, of why I opened it up. Yeah. Adrian, that's beautiful. I love that. Oh, she's so lucky. She must love it in that store, especially with your new lights. Like, I can't wait to go and see your store in person. But like, you know, just seeing like the whole setup and now the the shelves, like um, you guys are going to see this. I'm going to have links to all this. But, you know, with the lighting and the shelves and it must be such a wonderful place. And do you like test books out with her and see if she's feeling them or? 100%. And actually, because... <laughs> So the store I'm in now is like a smaller store and we have smaller businesses inside it, right? Nice. And that's that's like the store itself with everything. But the flagship, like the real bookstore where we're gonna where I wanna throw events and have everybody come through is gonna be in Jackson Heights. And I'm working on that super hard right now. My nice. goal is by the end of this year, the summertime, it's gonna be up. That's the goal, no matter what. That's every everything I'm doing is working towards that. And yeah, no, she loves it. And she does test the books. And I want to tell people like, listen, I do these kids recs because she tested it and she <laughs> likes it. Her bookshelf is ridiculous right now just because she has so many books and thankful for the authors who always write her like a book and send it to her. So she, oh. she has, she has a bunch of books signed to her already. <laughs> and then when she couldn't read her name, she didn't know that they were signed to her. And then now that she's grown up, she's like, hey, this says my name on it. Well, yeah, because they wrote it for you. Because they, they gave you a little <laughs> note for just for you. But yeah, no, she tests a lot of the books and she enjoys a lot of the books. And I see how she how she how she responds to them, especially the bilingual books, yeah. because she's in a she's in a dual language school. Amazing. Because I want her to make sure she speaks Spanish and English like fluently. Mine's a little choppy because my mom spoke to me in English because she's from here. So oh, we yeah. we. Yeah. So we speak English, but I know Spanish. I understand it. I can speak it, but I want to make sure she knows like the basics and she never feels uncomfortable and she can always switch and switch back and forth. But yeah, especially bilingual books, I make sure how she's reacting to it. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. Like I, I say conversational and I'm trying to get better with Spanish. It's it's a goal of mine to especially um like the kind of stuff that I'm doing now. I, I wanna make sure that I um, you know, level up a little bit. So I have like tutors, like I'm, that's one of always been one of my goals. So I feel you on that. Um, and also I just wanted to say, like, just mention, just because maybe we're not as fluent and can't do lectures in Spanish, doesn't mean we're not Latinos, Latine, Latine, Latinx. Just talk to thousand percent. One hundred thousand percent. I believe that because people get in the comments acting like a fool and I'm like, all right, first of all, calm down. There isn't the test to see who's more latino than the other or exactly. latina or whatever it's we're all from the culture we all were raised differently yeah and that's it yeah we're still in love with our culture we're still in love with our people we're still in love with everything and that's it exactly. and if you want to get historical technically it's not our language please <laughs> we're, believe it. we're trying to decolonize <laughs> over here fools we're trying to decolonize over here if you want to be your, you want to be from your country i want you to think the real the first language they spoke but exactly i digress <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so let's get into the questions and comments from the audience, okay? okay. So um, this is the first question is, how do you decide which books to add to your bookshop? And this is in and, and the comment side comment uh, after that is I love the variety of book genres you showcase in your reels. I'm a new fan. And this is by Mireya Guerrero, founder of Mariposa Language Immersion. Ayuda a tus hijos y estudiantes a llegar más lejos. Aprende más sobre la beca nacional a ser de McDonald's. Desde 1985, McDonald's ha otorgado más de 33 millones de dólares en becas. Gánate una beca de hasta 100 mil dólares. McDonald's está dando 500 mil dólares en becas este año. Puedes ganar una de 30 becas. Hoy día, es importante seguir adelante y hacer más. A ayudar a estudiantes hispanos a hacer más que las generaciones anteriores. Hacer más de lo que se creen capaz. Hacer más de lo que pensaban que era posible. Por sí mismos, por su gente, por su cultura, por un mejor futuro. Para más información sobre la beca nacional Hacer de McDonald's, visita mcdonalds.com diagonal hacer. Aprende más. Oh, thank you for the question. Um... I take very big pride in the books that I curate. So when I first opened the store, I had to have like the biggest hit books that were going on at the time, right? So that meant like white authors. Thankful for my community, thankful for TikTok, thankful for everybody that I was able to stop selling that and literally only have shelves that are BIPOC. So black, indigenous authors, people of color, Latina, AAPI, MENA, Middle Eastern, everything. And... The way I made the the way I choose is that they have to pass like three criteria. One, do I like it? But also, do people need the book and want the book? Like that visibility. So I started reading more romance books and self help books, mm -hmm. which I don't really like the term self help. Like self love, I I like to say self love. I don't like self help, like mm -hmm. right? Because you're learning how to love yourself more for the things that you went through yes. or the things that you've been through. So I started reading more of those books because TikTok really like the audience really wanted more of it. So I go, okay, I will read more of it and try to find people from our people. Yeah. So you guys can have it. So it, it has to pass those two things. And then three, I like to keep a lot of the books I have, books that people haven't read. Right. So like, of course, we're going to have some classic Isabel Allende. We're going to have Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Wow. But a lot of times we're going to, I'm going to try to get books that people have never heard of. Mm. And that's not to say that I don't want to sell the bigger name books. I do. I love selling the bigger name books. And I do have them. But I also want to put a spotlight on like debut authors. Um, a lot of I have a lot of um, translation books. Mm. Just because I want to make sure like, hey, this one's in English. This is from the, your country, from your parents' country. But also if they wanted to read it, they can read it too because it, it's originally written in Spanish. Love that. So yeah. And for kids, same. Like I, like I said, I <laughs> my kid tests them out. I make sure I read them. And I, I try to make sure that it covers everybody in Spanish and English and other languages too. That's amazing. Is there a section in the book? Do you share your um, daughter's name? Like, do you no. say it? So, Wait, oh, oh, in like in the, in, like, the, in my TikToks? Or just or? in general, like what, say, say, you know, cause some people like, I, I never say my son's name. That's why he goes by the supernatural bear. But like, say like <laughs> if you do, or oh. she has a nickname or something like, you know, maybe her nickname's Muñeca. Is there a section in the store that's like Muñeca approved? <laughs> I'm so happy you asked me that. Okay. All right. All right. I'm so glad you asked me that. There isn't, not right now. Just, it's just, a, it's because of the space constraint. Got it. But the it's been planned out since she was probably 10 days old is that yes, her middle name, it's going to be based off her middle name Perfect. and it's going to be called summer's corner. Her middle name's summer. I love summer. She loves summer. Thankfully <laughs> she, she hates the cold. I didn't know how that was going to work out, but it worked out well. Uh, but yes. Yeah, so when the real flagship opens up, the children's book section, it's going to be a whole section. It's going to be called summer's corner. And it's going to be like where kids can read named after her. But yeah, no one's, I've never told anybody that because that's like, it's been in my mind to build it. But yeah, that's what it's going to be called. <laughs> amazing. I love it. I can't wait. That's going to be beautiful. And we're manifesting this shit. So it's going to happen. 
It's going to yes. happen in 2023. The flagship store is happening. Okay. So both of us, well, actually three, the three of us, including the Supernatural Bear, um, have had the honor of being uh, a guest on the Best Book Ever podcast. Yes. Shout out to Julie. Uh, I spoke about Dealing in Dreams by a uh, previous Word to Your Mama guest and, you know, mi hermana, Lilian Rivera. And I talked about that it healed my teen self, right? It was like the book that I saw myself completely, like the book that you were talking about, where I was like, mm -hmm. oh, what? This is me. It was like hip hop infused violence and figuring out that that wasn't the way and trying to be a man and all this stuff and love. It, it was just beautiful. And, and it just had all these sensibilities that make me up. And it's also very rare as a, um, a Latina, Latina, Latinx to see that those type of yeah. stories where we're, we're everything, but also so talking about the influence of hip hop and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, anger and violence and and stuff like that like the survival skills and everything so yeah. so my question is well the next question from the questions and comments from the audience is and you answered one what was the first book you saw yourself represented in um did we say what the title was of that book no it's called the brief wondrous life of oscar well it's by juan Diaz and there was some issues that he did and mm. they were inexcusable, which is why I don't always like to promote his books. And I don't Got even it. sell the book, but there's no, there's nothing I can say that is the book that I saw myself in for the first time. He's a good writer. You can't take that away, but he did have like controversy because he did bad things. So that makes yeah, sense. That's okay, the name of the so book. that's the first book you saw yourself represented. And then the second question is what books would you have recommended to your younger self? And this is by Jessica Marquez Cable, an amazing writer who's currently working on her first book. Ooh, that's a good question. No one's ever asked me that question. I haven't <laughs> even seen that on my own on anything. <laughs> One of the okay. I would recommend for my earlier self, even though it's like a heavy book. 100%, which is my favorite book ever. It's top. 100 Years of Solitude. Mm. By Gabriel Garcia Marquez. My favorite book, although there's like questionable things in it just because of the time that it was written in, it, there was, it was my first four-way, one, into a different country, and two, the historical fiction of it. Mm. The historical fiction of it made me more interested in learning about world history, which in then turn like made me learn more. So if I would have read that earlier, I would have been more interested in things. Another book, any of her books is um, Elizabeth Acevedo. Okay. Okay. Just because similar to Lillian's book, she, the way she writes, she's from New York. I think she's from the Bronx. She's Dominican. And she, the way she writes her characters, any of them feel like they could have been a part of the gang. Any of them could have been my homie. <laughs> any of them. Like we could have been in the same class. Like she, she writes so effortlessly the way we speak mm -hmm. regularly, like just on a regular basis. It, it was just beautiful. I've never seen it written on a page so well. And it, it didn't seem forced. It didn't seem anything. It just seemed like, okay, she could have been my friend. He could have been my friend. We're in class right now. Um, oop, pregnancy early on. Whoops. Things like that. Like things that really happened. Like yeah, yeah. it was real. And I would recommend that because I, I just think that's a really cool book. Like any of her books are super duper cool just because of how it relates to our younger selves. That's amazing. Okay. So now, Adrian, let's get into the not so rapid fire questions, the AKA slow as hell questions. Slow as hell questions. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, let's do it. Three words to describe yourself. Okay. Reader, um, adventurous, and ooh, well, um, <laughs> I always like this one because I always describe it as this. And I guess it's okay, but bubbly. bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> that was one. Of the, that's how I've been described, and I've always. It just made me laugh. Like that's just a funny way to describe me. But it's because I always like, like how you say man, we're manifesting that. I'm always like, eh, it'll work out. Like, and it will. It, I, that's how I manifest. I go, it'll work out. Everything's gonna go good. Bubbly. That's. I think that's the first time in the history of this podcast that someone's used bubbly as the <laughs> big word, and I'm down for it. I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay, the next question. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm. 
the best piece of advice I've ever received. Um, you know what's <laughs> you know what's funny? I haven't gotten a lot of advice. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I, I mean it might be my fault. I don't I don't usually go and ask for it, but I think well I, I've read advice like I've read mm. things where the person's giving you advice, and I think one of those is. Be as create like be as creative as possible, and just stick to your vision, and it'll happen. Yeah. Because you'll make it'll it'll once you produce it for the world, you'll it'll it'll work out. I and that. yeah, yeah, that was I I read that one time, and I was like yeah, and then from that moment I've said no matter what I, I'm going to do this. Yeah, okay. and that pertains to. We have to be reminded all the time to do the, um, like the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the relay race where they're always like, don't look to the side, you know, just stick to your lane. Like, just do it. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing, right? Like, it's just like, don't worry about it. Keep moving forward. And, and I think we forget sometimes, and I think especially in the day of social media where you're like, you know, I like how you said that you do the tip tops and maybe you've only danced once, right? Because people are like, and that's what I said. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I'm not consistent. I was like, but I know I'm not going to be dancing because that's that's not me. <laughs> that's not right. authentic to me, you know? And I don't want to blow up not- doing dances because then I'll have to stick doing dances. <laughs> like, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're going to chase that high. You know, like, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not keep. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. So this song is one of my, I mean, this song, this uh, question is one of my favorites because it's what song is your hype song when you need it? What is your go-to hype song? Ah, <laughs> ah I love this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got, we have two. I'll do, I'll, okay. Well, my number one hype song, no matter what. You can give me two. I'll add two. I'll give you, I'll two. I'll do two. Reggaeton Latino. Okay. Like that whole, the whole like slew of people. Uh-huh. I just loved it. I love that. And then I, anything, 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 anything from the Blueprint album from Jay-Z. Okay. Most, most likely the, my biggest hype one is probably Big Pimpin'. I'll be honest. Like when I listen to it, it's for when I'm going to get ready. Yeah. Like yeah. my adrenaline's up. I'm going to go and I'm going to just run out the door. That's like my hype hype song. <laughs> he says things that are questionable that I can't re- I can't sing it out loud anymore. But <laughs> it's still my hype song. I can't. I gotta do it. You again. can't deny it. I love that. It, it, yeah. And I'm not a biggest Jay Z fan, but that song is definitely on my list. So your two songs are going to be on the Word to Your Mama guest hype list playlist that's on Spotify. There's a, a link to it in the show notes. And then awesome. whoever's the latest, I always put their songs to the top of the list. We're, I think we're about maybe four hour, five hour mark. And we have like the craziest range of hype songs, which is that's amazing. So cool. And they're for like different things, right? Because especially it's interesting when I have uh, like people that work in music to see what their hype yeah. songs are. And then that's hard. And it's even hard for me because there's different ones for different occasions, right? Like, yeah, getting to go out, uh, getting, you know, I'm working on something and it's like, I, I'm, I'm imposter syndrome. How do I, you know, there's, there's, there's all these different ways. So I love that. So muchísimas gracias for that. Final question, Adrian, what yeah. will be your legacy? What will be my legacy? That's such an amazing question. Wow. I love that question. And honestly, this is not like in the most humble way possible. I feel like <laughs> my legacy is already happening. That's right. That's real. Right? Because like I'm very fortunate enough where I don't need to make anything, right? Like all I do is put the spotlight on amazing and creative people mm-hmm. and what they do. And when I see a comment from a parent or from a teacher telling me my kids really love this book and saw themselves in this book. That kid right there, no matter what happened, that that is one of their favorite books. You know, every single day someone orders from the shop, someone comes into the shop, someone sees me at the pop-up markets and grabs a book just because I was in that location where they've never seen books before. They go home with a new book and it could be their favorite book. And like, I feel like that's, to me, that's so crazy. 
and to get notes from people saying you taught me more about my country like it's uh. already happened and like yeah that's i hope that's my legacy not the store not the physical thing but just like introducing someone to their book like introducing them to their favorite book or books from their country or them seeing themselves for the first time that that's that's the legacy even if they don't remember me or where they got the book from i know that that they helped somebody that's that's cool i love that and you are correct i was if you weren't gonna say that i was gonna say you're doing it now so i'm glad that you're <laughs> like and you know we got to big up ourselves for what we're doing right now and it's bigger than us right like what you're providing for the community and for the world because now you have this platform and this reach it's it's a beautiful thing to see, Adrian. Muchísimas gracias for being here with me and having this convo. Um, Thank you so much. I hope it's not the the. You know, hope it's the first time. Hopefully, it's not the last time. If you ever want to come on for whatever reason, I'm here, and because I definitely want to. Uh, I'm sure people listening definitely want to keep track on on the manifestation of this amazing call, and you know, because we need to see mm. like a whole 360 of Summer's Reading Corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a whole TikTok. That's where all the TikToks are gonna be. More lights, more everything. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, hope it's gonna be a great time. I love that. So tell the people how they can, you know, your socials. What's the best way to reach you and follow you and stuff like that? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. That one's through the business one, the World's Borrow Bookshop, the World's Borrow Bookshop on TikTok. I'm Book Boppy. What? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> that one I'm still I one I still whisper when people say what's your name on TikTok I go oh it's Book Poppy <laughs> <laughs> because the minute I originally my TikTok was the business name and then I mm. and then I was like you know what I don't want it to, I don't want people to be t like thinking that I'm trying to sell them something I just want to recommend them books like have a conversation so I changed it to this one because my dad my my daughter only calls me papa she doesn't call me anything else but papa. And then I was trying to think of like, man, I want to make people make sure that they know who I am and make it cool. So then that's how I came up. Um, and so I'm on TikTok, I'm, I'm book poppy. And then, um, yeah. And then actually, you're one of the inspirations for it because I, when you followed me, I was looking at it. But right now I am interviewing people for my podcast yes. and i looked at it directly from like what you did and how you did it because you when you had lilium on i was like oh that'd be so cool that's so dope that's amazing. because yeah and i and it's it's directly from you I was like, one of these days i'm going to do one something like that because when i saw your interview with her i was like that's so cool because it's not that i don't like it but sometimes when too, like too many book people have conversation it gets too stuffy yeah yeah you know and thankfully, I've had like about three or four interviews already, and I haven't posted any of them yet. But they've been like, we're shooting the shit. Like, this yeah. is, we're, we're, just, we're just conversation. Yes. You know, we're talking about the culture, we're talking about the people, we're talking about people saying no to us. And it's not, it's less about like book, it's, not, it's less book heavy, it's more fun. Uh, but yeah, so that podcast is coming soon. What's right now it's called, it? right now it's called Liddy with Liddy. Book Poppy. <laughs> I don't want to say lit because everybody uses that. So I yeah. was like, you know, and I never said lit. I always felt too old to say, oh, that's lit or whatever. But I was like, Liddy. I always like saying Liddy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it that way. <laughs> but yeah, that one's coming soon, and it, I'm really excited about it. But yeah, I'm glad when you reached out to me, I was like, oh, it's so cool. I get to tell her because I hadn't told you yet. I but love yeah, this. This is one of the big. That's you're one of the big reasons why I did it because when I saw the interview, I was like, oh, this is better than like regular book. And I'm in the book world, so I'm like, eh, book conversations are boring. But this is pretty cool. Adrian, you just came <laughs> my fucking day right now. Like, I am like, am I red? I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's amazing because that's that was the goal, right? Like, I don't just have book people. I have all kinds. But when I had book yeah. people, I just want to have a conversation. I wanted to hear from my favorite authors, you know? So the fact that you have it, like, whatever you need, I am here. Like, cross promo, like, put, you know like we'll talk after this but <laughs> but yes. yeah no and the yes. and the reason you have so many different people that's another reason why instead of just authors i try to pick um latina bipoc um tiktok creators Dope. to put into the conversation like into into like the the block of episodes right so like i have two authors on mental health right Dope. and then one one creator who talks about mental health he's latino Dope. or i'll have someone who does a lot of manifestation things and then those books that talk about manifestation so yeah or like jobs and career but like i felt like that was even cooler because these people these are people who are not in the book world yes. and they read they don't they only really read in their subjects 
yeah. but I think like they can inspire their crowd to read more books too. So that was that came from you too because you interview so many different people and don't stay in like one little niche. That's what I liked about it. Adrian, I cannot <laughs> wait for this. Whatever you need, any support, we are here for you. And I'm so excited. Thank you. Um, and Liddy, it's funny that you say that because we had a <laughs> on the relatives, we had a conversation about things that we don't say because we feel too old. And Lit was one of that. But Liddy, yeah. love it. It rolls off the tongue better. Liddy. Liddy. Yeah. Liddy. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So when is it going to launch, like officially launch and be out there? Hopefully, I want to say March. Okay. March. And March is going to, and it's going to be done in chapters. Obviously, you got to keep it in the book. Come on, so like chapter one is going to be like mental health. Chapter two is going to be children. So you're going to have two children's authors and then like a TikTok creator who does things for children. So things like that. I love that. So what I just was thinking uh, when you mentioned your story, we talked about your story and then you talked about the podcast. You're kind of like a, like a sommelier of books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. I've never described it that way. I'm, I'm gonna make that my new bio. <laughs> you know, because you're like, oh, what are you into? Like, what? Are, what are the notes? Da, 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 da. Yeah, well, I recommend such and such and such. And such. So yes, so, that's what. I, I, that's what. That's what you have to do. I feel like because then they they ask me like, oh, what book do you recommend? I'm like, what do you like to do? Do you play any sports? Oh, you play soccer. Okay, this is a soccer book from Argentina. You would love it. <sighs> Like, I need to know what you like before I give you a recommendation. That's but real. But yeah, sommelier. I like that. Sommelier <laughs> book. book. Book poppy. The sommelier <laughs> book. Books. <laughs> That's going to be the intro to it. I'm going to say that. <laughs> well, muchísimas gracias, Adrián. This has been amazing. And I, Thank I, you so you're much. You're just going to, you know, continue to grow and bring so much value to, to you know, all you know all of our marginalized communities so muchísimas gracias for what you do and i love it and i love your vibe thank you so much Ruthie. i really appreciate it and thank you for everything honestly and now introducing the supernatural bear corner supernatural bear bear Hello everyone, it is I, the Supernatural Bear, and today on the Supernatural Bear Corner, we are going to be discussing the book Papi, or Mr. Adrian. You have no idea how long it took me to learn how to say that. Um, he lives in Queens, bookstore in Queens. Um, I really love his work, a lot of his work that he's done. And also, if you are listening to this... Mr. Adrian, a uh, quick question. Have you seen, like, a, I uh, can't say who it is for copyright infringement purposes, but, like, uh, blue and red with, like, black spiderweb kind of patterns on it? And is he has, like, like, kind of goggles-ish? Have you seen some him flying around anywhere? If so, take a picture and send it to me. Yay! <laughs> um, anyway, he's really cool. Um, I'd love to meet him someday. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Keep this short and simple. See you guys next week. Or week after next week. I'm not sure if next week's, like, relatives or... Not sure. Anyway, bye. Do should be do Yeah Well there you have it folks Episode 119 of Where's Your Mama with Adrian aka Book Poppy How amazing was that? So let's all support in any way possible so he can manifest and realize this dream of having his own standalone brick and mortar spot up in Queens. I'm hella hyped. I will be going because since I'm a speaker at NFT NYC, I will be going to New York in April. And I had already planned to, to get together with Rick from the Rick H show. You know, my boys over there also in Queens, the hip hop advocates. And then after our convo, I was telling uh, Book Papi, I was like, yo, let's let's all break bread together. And I want to see his store in person and buy the book that he recommends for all those Percy Jackson readers out there. Um, I mean, 
to to read a story for the supernatural bear and I to read a story together, and it's has you know stuff that looks like him and stories that we may or may not have heard you know legends and myths and I mean that's next level stuff I mean to be to be a kid growing up during these times having books movies representation matters representation matters okay so uh, as always thank you so much for listening supporting doing what you do telling your folks telling your peeps telling your friends um, you know, there's all those different ways to support you. Also, before I get into that, if you have any, you know, issues, suggestions or whatever, uh, or you're like, oh, I want to hear the conversation with you and such and such. Feel free to email me at hola at word to your dot com. And then let's get back to how you other ways you can support besides the free ways you could um buy something from the store. We got some new pins that we're going to be releasing soon. I did a um, another Stevie um, Wonder Illustration pin that has never been released. So I'll be posting about that soon. And then uh, you can donate directly. You can buy us a whiskey via buy us a coffee. You can become a patron um, be, be, <laughs> via uh, patron.com. And um, yeah. Thank you for all the support, and uh, until next time, we read. Word to Your Mama is owned and produced by Ritz P. Intro Beat, produced by Nico Beats. If you want to know more, I want to email us. You want to get the media kit, go head over to wordtoyourmama.com. Word to Your Mama is now part of the Latina Podcasters Network. And as always, Word to Your Mama is brought to you by RitzPerrowinkle.com.